Excerpt from Wolves of Croton, The Untold Story of Milo, Hoplotodromos, Chapter 5, Bastardizing Truce. This is not an athletic competition. It is a brazen exhibition of military fitness, intent on pure intimidation. The aliens are bastardizing the truce, violating their own vow. This will only erode the sanctity of the games, an insult to the mighty Zeus. Only corruption could have influenced such a greedy decision. Ancient Greek source. Hey everybody, John Abdo here, author of Wolves of Croton, The Untold Story of Milo. I just want to do a prelude to a live presentation that I'm planning, haven't scheduled it yet on the Hopla to Dromos. And the Hopla to Dromos is the race in armor, i.e. hoplites racing at the Olympiad Games. And the way it ties into Milo, I'll explain it in that live presentation. But in 520 BC is when they instituted that event, having battle-tested warriors literally in the Olympiad Games, and the Greeks founded the Olympiad Games because all the Greek city-states were arguing and fighting with one another, said, hey, let's have some festivals where your strongest men and even your strongest women, because there's competitions for both men and women, your greatest performers and entertainers, and even your master seers like Pythagoras from Croton and other masterminds within their fields of anatomy and uh, mathematics and cosmology and things like that, uh, they had a stage for that, and it was under a worldwide truce. The Armatus was both sanctioned by the Hellenic Federation, and they would send heralds around the world saying, on this date, we're going to have this event, no military action. You have to stop all military action. So supposedly, they put their swords back into their scabbards, stabbed their spears into the ground, and says, okay, we're going to compete in athletic competition because a lot of the hoplites or a lot of the soldiers or warriors, whatever name or label you want to give to them, were either athletes or they definitely trained like athletes. So it was a great event for that. But when the Olympiad Committee decided to stage the Hoplodromos, having warriors compete at the Olympiad Games since 776 B.C. to 520 B.C., which is, what, 200 and something years later, it's like, okay, instead of these fair competition, the battle fought and the victory won in a pit and on a track surrounded by true sworn spectators and officials under the worldwide armatus, fair competition, they're all bare. None of them wore clothing except the kind of sign to cover the sheath of the uh, uh, propitial skin of the, uh, of the penis. They were able to show the testicles. Uh, all of a sudden, every, everybody is like in an uproar, like, wait a minute, are these peaceful games or are these military acts? And I firmly believe that because of Milo's dominance, Milo of Croton, Milo was considered the world superpower, the most powerful military weapon in the world, because no man or men could could wrestle this guy in the pit. A lot of them just says, hey, I'm not wrestling at all. And that's what they call win by Akaniti. Akaniti is no dirt, dustless, never even stepping foot inside the pit. His opponent would say, no, 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 I'm not wrestling. I'm forfeiting or claim some crazy injury or something like that. Uh, there's three running events. There's State, Dialis, and Dolichos. State is about 190 meters. Uh, Dialis is twice that. So you go to one end of the uh, stadium or arena and come back. And Dolichos, depending on the mood of the committee, it could be anywhere from 6 to 12 to 24 times <laughs> that race. So now you have the Dialis race, which is almost 400 meters, 190 meters too. And then back, I don't know if they turned around a pole or they just touched a wall or officials and they turned back. Literally garbed in military panoply of armaments, helmets, breastplates, Hoplons or shields, probably had swords and scabbards, holding spears, had greaves on their shins and bushkins, which actually covered their feet. And they're running in the super hot August sun, which other runners that just had their bare skin and their olive oil on there complained of excessive perspiration and dehydration and, and heat exhaustion and things like that, especially the spectators that had to stare, uh, stand there and watch everybody on the grassy slope. So I want to do a full presentation, far more in detail, about the Hopla Tedromos, 
because I believe the alien committee, who is the group from Ellis, which is 12 miles away from Olympia, they were the organizing and governing committee for all Olympiad Games events. I believe that they decided to stage that event. Couldn't have been out of boredom. This was Milo's fifth Olympiad Games. He competed in four Olympiad Games prior to that. And prior to that, four years prior to that, in 540 BC, he competed in the uh, World Youth Games. So now you actually have over 20 years, 24 years of dominance taken in consideration his teenage competition at the World Youth Games. 24 years of dominance. And I believe is that because Milo dominated the world, not everybody was on Milo's team. Not everybody was in favor of Milo. Milo was taking social, economic, ideological, political power away from everybody. And was, he was like a vacuum. It just sucked right into Croton, Italy. So again, the Hoplitodromos was a race that was contested on the grounds based on the Olympian oath, where this is supposed to be fair competition, the battle fought and the victory won with naked bodies on a track or in a pit in front of, again, true sworn or Artemis sworn spectators and officials that the spectators were saying, do we prefer peaceful or evil acts? So you can imagine if you're seeing these warriors come onto the uh, arena to run in a race at the Olympiad Games where all the other athletes are competing peacefully and naked and all this other stuff, a lot of these hoplite athletes, hoplite soldiers, being athletes running at the uh, Olympiad Games and the Hopla Tedromos, they had blood crusting on their blades or on their spear tips. They had killed people that I'm sure were namesakes or family members or associates of the people who were standing on the grassy slopes spectating them in the first place. Anyway, I'm getting a little carried away here. I really love this part of the story because I had no idea when I was writing the book, and that's why it got so big, when I was writing the book, it's like, oh, man, in 520 BC, you know, Milo is competing for his fifth Olympiad title. He's the world superpower, the reigning, defending Olympiad wrestling champion, regarded as the strongest man in the world who actually not only lifts, but carries a full-grown bull, and he just doesn't carry the bull across the palestra, which is the wrestling school. He walks around the entire arena carrying his bull. Now, all of a sudden, the attention is being diverted or diluted. Milo's competing at these games, but this is the first games for the Hopla to Dromos, and you'll see what the spectators and the officials say before, during, and after that event. So I'm John Abdo, wanting to give you a little sneak peek into a live presentation I'm presenting on the Hopla to Dromos, Hoplites and Armor, racing at the Olympiad Games, and how and why it caused a lot of turmoil back in those days. Thank you for joining me. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, ring that bell. It's really helping me get the book out there and this message. A lot of people don't know about Milo or Croton. Many people who do know about Milo or Croton, that's the most popular thing that is known about him. He's the man who lifted a bull and oh yeah, I heard he's a, uh, a former Olympiad wrestling champion of antiquity. There's a lot more to this man's story and I'm always eager to bring it to you. 99 cents on Amazon, the paperback is under $20. It's really a must read for all of you out there. Thank you for joining me. I'll talk to you again soon.